Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. It didn't we, hang this time. Yeah, normally it gives us two times, so that we, we hesitate. We normally say good morning twice, just to be sure. Yeah, as it goes on and off. Okay, so we, we this is day number 21 of 21 days of victory. So we got 21. We made it. 21. Congratulations. <laughs> Hallelujah. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is so awesome. Uh, and, and we know there are many of you that have actually gone through all, all the training, yeah. all the teachings, well uh, done. all 21 <laughs> days. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's like a 21 day mm -hmm. fast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seeking the Lord. So this is good. Crystal. Yeah. Hallelujah. Welcome. Good morning. Morning. Anton. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So now we, we're, we're excited about what God wants to do. We thank the Lord that he is now <laughs> with us. And he's, uh, how's it, Annette? How's it, uh, how's it Conrad? Ruina? Good Welcome. Morning. Now spread. Yes, in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Bongeka. Bongeka. I think, where are you from? I think you're from, is that the one from Germany? I, I believe so, you yes. Utenaik. Okay, you Utenaik. Uh, no, it's Utenaik, South it's Africa. It's Utenaik. Utenaik. <laughs> morning noise, yeah. Good morning. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Blessed to be a blessing. Amen. How's it, Glenn? Praise the Lord. It's Annette Ashton, from Ashton. Yeah, all of you, we just bless you and greet you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mariki from Paul. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good so um, I don't know how many of you guys were on yesterday, on the broadcast yesterday, as you Me? saw. <laughs> yeah, many was on. Um, <laughs> but it was like uh, I was going to share on the high priest and then the Lord just downloaded Concerning the poor, as I 58, all strategy, a Zoom meeting. So today, I just want to remind you guys, if you didn't see it, the Zoom meeting is on at two o'clock. Yeah. We put the we put the announcement on on the on our um, first of all on our Facebook page and on, on our WhatsApp groups. I've even emailed it to all our email contacts, so you can get it there. You can go and register. Just a note: you don't have to be having a ministry to be on there. Mm. You can just say, "Okay, I want to." Uh, maybe you work on Excel, or you can do admin, or you can phone people. Yeah. So there's lots of people in, need to be involved as far as skills, different skills. Maybe you've mm. got contacts. Maybe you, whatever. Just um, the, the Lord says His people will be volunteers in the day of His power. Yeah, volunteers. Yeah. So it's now the time to volunteer and say, "Lord." Here I am. Mm. Use me whatever way because this is going to be a coordinated effort of reaching out to the poor. And, 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 and God wants to pour out His revival on the poor. So we're excited for the meeting. I've already got the whole structure for the meeting mm. and, uh, and how we're going to do the meeting. Because it's really going to be a planning meeting and yeah. to discover one another and basically saying, okay, so this is basically the, the bones of the plan. So I'm very excited to listen to uh, the input that uh, others are going to give as well yeah. because people have been called in this. <laughs> but, so, hallelujah. Lots of hearts, lots of love. We receive it. We bless you guys. As immaculate. Dominique. Good morning. Hallelujah. And Rian and Caleb and Levi from Moinoi. We bless you guys. So, <laughs> so yeah, let's join. And, and you guys that are intercessors, please, if you can just I've put out a prayer request, please, can you pray yeah. over this? We need to take out the strong man here, which is mm. like uh, there's, a, there's a couple of issues here. One of the things is disunity and the spirit of competition and independence yeah. when it comes, it comes to feeding the poor. For instance, you know, some guys, let's get in at, at Woolworths, say, a Bedford View, and then another ministry comes there and there's like a, comp there's like a competition for limited resources. Mm. So God is going to open this thing up and we're going to find a way to get the resources. And I, I believe they're actually uh, virtually unlimited resources. But the, the, the problem is we're not working together. So everyone says, okay, I'm going to go to the local spa. Yeah, and this. And then someone else goes to the spa. And then there's like a competition now because yeah. the people you're feeding couldn't get food because someone else took your supplier. And, uh, and, and this is the kind of stuff that happens. And it becomes like, you know, think of, think of the nature of what God's calling us to do when it comes to the poor mm -hmm. and it comes to the brethren. He says we must share, okay, our food. We must share our bread, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now think of this. Now you're going to share with people out there. Mm. Okay. But the problem is that the, the ministries are not sharing in, 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 in many cases. I'm not saying all cases. I'm sure there are ministries that are working together. And we just say praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Bless you guys. But on a bigger scale, there needs to be logistics. There needs to be coordination so we can get even the... Some of them are buying at retail. And so we were talking about this morning. Yeah. Uh, retail instead of wholesale. So yeah. in other words, yeah. you're buying materials, but you're buying at retail. Maybe we can do uh, a more... Uh, 
kind of a bulk purchasing, getting better discounts from suppliers, uh, dealing direct with farmers, as opposed to going through retailers to get the same product that the farmers are supplying, or going directly to the manufacturers. I just saw a WhatsApp now, they're saying that uh, Tiger Brands wants to help give, uh, or Saska, which is owned by Tiger Brands, yeah, yeah. wants to give bread out. So, so, so basically, those are the kind of connections we need, but we need to now coordinate and say, okay, we're yeah. representing, say, uh, 500. Uh, and so when we go to Tiger Brands, if I had to go to Tiger Brands, um, I, I could go to them and say, we represent 500 different ministries, as opposed yeah. to you going and representing yourself. So, mm. so what happens is you got a lot better buying power. you got a lot more coordination. Yeah. Then we can look at coordinating bulk shipping, transport, business logistics. Okay. Let's say you've got guys in the, in the Western Cape and they are doing grain. Okay. And then the grain's got to come all the way to Joburg. Maybe there's a truck that's coming back empty from Cape Town or, mm. come, uh, you know, vice versa. So yeah. these guys have transport business. There's so much logistics yeah. involved here. And that's where the Josephs come in is because they are understanding logistics. I was, uh, you know, that was my experience for many years, the mm. fast moving consumer goods, the whole what is called the supply chain. So so if you've been in, in the market, that's the ideal training, because this is basically yeah. there's a lot of practical <laughs> things. And uh, and we need to basically have it very well organized so that the prices can come down and the food can get right through the veins, right to the, 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 the little ministry that's only serving five people. Yeah, yeah. So we're not, the focus here is not looking at the big ministries because mm. the big ministries are already running so, and they're very, most probably well organized yeah. and the thing and, 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 and they, they're just going to run on their own. But yeah. we are looking to help well, we can work with the bigger ministries, but I'm saying we're looking to help the smaller ministries and, and people that, let's say you decide you want to just feed 10 people and you want to help in your community or your church wants to get involved, but it's like you can't, you, you, you're unable to get yeah. wheat or you're unable to get beans and this one can get beans. So it's coming down to a, a food parcel and say, what goes in the food parcel? Where do we get this? And most of them are going to buy the food at the local pick and pay. And say, well, maybe we can get, we can save like ten percent or fifteen percent mm. if we start to buy it directly from the manufacturers. And so there's a lot of opportunities here. There's a lot of things that we can do better, and and we can basically work together. But what I believe is God's bringing the skill sets together. He's bringing mm. the resources together. He's bringing the mind, yeah. the mind of Christ together, because like, we are the mind of Christ. It's another together, picture again the mind of, of Christ. what we've been saying is laying down the individual to, yes. to do the corporate. Yeah. This is something that we released, I think, 2018 January in Cape Town. Yeah. At a gathering of fire. That's the vessel. About when we shared the whole thing about the vessel, and I think we've shared on one of the lives about the staircase yes. of surrender and the vessel and the ingredients and all of that. Um, but when you're talking, I see the similar, same picture of That's it. laying down our individual efforts and receiving the corporates, um, or even laying down your, your uh, individual anointings and receiving the corporate anointings. So yeah. that together oh wow i found a picture that i was looking for uh and uh this one is like a 3d uh honeycomb picture but oh you'll, get, you'll get, you'll get that lost in yeah, you, 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 you can get mesmerized in there so how's that for a picture uh let me get my laptop i like it like that oh now the lights on it so there we go okay so there we go yeah, I'm going to share that actually on the, on the, on the, I found this for the, for the actual uh, Zoom meeting webinar. Cool. Okay, so basically, God wants to release that strategy. And this is basically like also, maybe yeah. four or five or six people working together, another four or five, and they're all interlinked. And the honey comes inside here. And no one, it's not a pyramid. You notice you, you don't have bees building pyramids. No. This is a complete, <laughs> what in organogram no. style, this is a flat structure. Like and you can actually have this covering the whole nation. Hallelujah. So that's the structure that the Lord showed Miriam. The honeycomb structure, he showed her that in, um, was it, 2012. Yeah. Okay. We, when he spoke about kingdom yeah. cooperation. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So we, we bless you. And we greet you, Joel. Hallelujah. Sarah. Michael. Good morning. Hallelujah. Michalisburg. Hallelujah. I really like that one. Isn't that awesome? And you can even see the bigger... Yeah, so you can, it's like it's, it's like you can look at this mm. one. So I, I found that one. I found another one as well, um, which is now giving the the whole country. It's like all the lights. Cool. This is like all of them connected, but this is like a network of, across it's the landscape. Flat. No, yeah, but this is yeah. like a landscape yeah. view. I like this it's one as like well. But fire, it's you see that? Thing. You yeah. see the fire on there? Hallelujah! But that's I the like landscape. It. That's the whole of South Africa covered like that. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And that's God, basically, that's God's kingdom economy. You're looking at God's kingdom economy and every uh, honeycomb cell, every one of those cells is going to receive resources. Mm. So it's not this pyramid structure with this massive ministry uh, that's going to, you know, that's going to control everything. It's flat mm. structure. All we need to do is implement and find the structure, connect the dots, and, and there we go. Well, so, the, the, and the greater the structure, the greater the capacity yeah, to receive honey. I mean, it. a bee is not going to put a lot of honey in one little honeycomb yeah. thing. But if you expand it. If you expand it, it all just, yeah. the, God will put the honey in you. You I see, like he's in charge of the honey. <laughs> yeah, you understand? He is. He, he's, 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 he's in charge of the honey and the, yeah. the whole thing with, yeah. with the flowers and the bees and everything like that. But ultimately, also the bees also can represent intercessors, intercessors as well. Yeah. So, so the yeah. intercessors play a vital role here. And I don't think we've really brought the attention of the intercessors before onto feeding the poor and focusing on feeding the poor mm. to pray over it. And now this is yeah. the basically we're doing this on a national basis with our network of intercessors to say, right, let's pray over this so that God can actually break the stronghold of mammon. Okay, so because God, this is about the new economic system. Yeah. This is about a kingdom economy. And so if you can just share this now, I mean, we've got place for 100 people. And if there was more, maybe we can just pay some more. And, and, and I think it could go up to 300. Um, or we can just broadcast the Zoom directly onto, 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 onto YouTube. YouTube. Mm. But as far as people that can contribute, we can get up to 100 now on the Zoom. Uh, this afternoon at two o'clock. So, like I say, share with people you believe mm-hmm. that are that are, that have got a heart for the poor. They want to help yeah. the poor. They don't even have to have a ministry. Mm-hmm. They just maybe sitting at home wondering what they should be doing, and they want to do something. And here it is. Okay, so we just I just wanted to share that with you. Mm-hmm. This is now That's coming good. together. The Joseph Company, and and what is amazing is what I was thinking, and we were discussing this morning. I was discussing with Neil the whole thing with the Joseph Company. Mm-hmm. Um, we were, we were looking at this thing and it was like, it, it just became so, you know, clear that, you know, just think of this, Joseph fed the world. Okay. When there was a famine because he prepared yeah. before there was a famine, yeah. but God gave the Pharaoh the dream, but only Joseph had the interpretation, but more than the interpretation, he had a strategy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the Joseph yeah. company are those that God is giving divine strategies. And I'm not saying I can, I've can. i got the whole strategy. I've got part of the strategy. I know that. But I know that the other Josephs that yeah. need to connect with me, that forms the Joseph company. And then we say, oh, we got about this. And what about the government? And what about this? And we're going to just see this massive picture. And this is the economy that God's going to pour in the storehouses. Yeah, That's amazing. the storehouse of God, the honeycomb. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, and, and the silos that God's going to put out there. And so uh, when I made that picture, I was looking for silos. I found the most beautiful picture. I don't know if you saw that picture. I, will, I love it. Uh, isn't that, <laughs> isn't it. it like an awesome picture? Did, I don't know. Let me, show, let me find the picture. show you the picture. I love pictures. So uh, I, I like to create nice pictures. But uh, I think this is something, because I've been getting responses to when we sent this out on WhatsApp, and a lot of people are saying, you know, they, they're sitting with similar ideas. And I really believe this is something that's been stirring in the hearts of a lot of people. Yeah. And it's just, there's an idea, but there's no way of implementing. And that this is now, that's it. this is the time to implement. God, God is setting up, um, let me that's give you beautiful. this one. Uh, the other one has got the Zoom details. On, on. It's even got the stars there, like I have. Yeah, so it's got it's got the stars in the, it's got the stars in the sky. Let me give you yeah. a better quality one. Okay, so there we go. Did you see there? All right. My background. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, but it's gone backwards there. I, well, maybe they can see it. They can read it. It looks backwards on our side, but maybe you can read it. It says know. Joseph Company there. I don't know if it's backwards. All right. So that's it. Um, so there's the silos. I think there's eight silos over here. Seven or eight silos. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So, um, and then I've got you yeah, written on your Joseph Company. And But but was, what is beautiful is this is in, a, in the midst of a field over here, a wheat field. And there's this, you can actually see the stars in the heavens like Abraham saw. And I just thought this is the most beautiful with the actual green, the green, the green silos. I've never seen silos looking like that. So anyway, that is beautiful. And God is raising up the Joseph Company in Africa. I just want to point out this is for Africa and the nations. And I, I would like Miriam to share the, the vision um, on the Kingdom Corporation that she got in 2012, which she didn't know she was sharing. That's okay. Have you got it? No, but you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Um, okay, I think I've got the best term to find it. That vision where you said get excited. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that was exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this so, was in about I think April, um, uh, March two thousand twelve. 
Yeah. Yeah, this was March two, yeah, 2012. Yeah. This was, um, Warren was having a meeting with um, some other business guys and I sat in on the meeting with my laptop or my, I can't remember if I had a laptop yeah, or if is, I yeah, was writing. I found it. But so they were talking and I just, I, I had a whole experience while they were talking, um, which is awesome. And, <laughs> and, 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 well, but you must understand, <laughs> when we were talking, we were just basically talking about some form of a cooperation between them, uh, their company, my company, yeah. working together, um, but just basically talking and whatever, and and then Miriam just, just, you know, Ooh. God does that. She just goes on her own. I just tell trip. people I go into my own world. All right. <laughs> so if you want to scroll, if you want to let me. Okay. So you there can, you go. You can scroll, but I, I remember this very really well. I might just forget little details, but so I'm sitting in in the meeting, and I'm I'm like I'm sitting now with my laptop and. Um, I believe I had a laptop, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the did. Lord said to me, uh, "Get excited," <laughs> and so I didn't, <laughs> because I, I, I instead I got concerned. I was like, "Why would the Lord have to tell me to get excited? It's probably going to be something that I'm not at all excited about." Um, and then He said to me again, "Get excited! It's coming forth." And then I understood afterwards why He said, "Get excited." Now we had just walked through very painful season i just lost our second baby um and i wanted nothing to do with visions and dreams about babies and all i said i don't i'm done with this pain story um when we got married god gave me a whole experience and he said you're gonna have um you're gonna have a son and this is his name and then after that i lost two two children so this vision was shortly after that that's why he used those words get excited it's <laughs> coming forth and as he said, get excited, it's coming forth. I began to see the head of a baby crowning. Sure. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, so that's why he had to tell me to get excited because I, I wanted nothing to do with that. Um, and then I began to see, uh, well, first he said to me, what will be birthed in South Africa will be embraced by the nations. Sure. And then I began to see that. So I was seeing the head of this baby crowning, but it was over South Africa. Sure. And I wrote down in my notes here, the birthing, it's, a, it's the birthing of a cooperation that is totally kingdom minded and is focused on expanding the kingdom. Um, and then right after that, I saw lots of little <laughs> wombs all over the map of South Africa with little heads of babies crowning all over. Um, yeah, I saw the wombs were like cities or businesses. Some were bigger, some were smaller, but all were on the verge of bringing forth. Um, and what I understood is that the devil has sought to prevent conception. He wants to abort. He wants to miscarry and kill that which is to be brought forth in the creative business minds and wombs of those called in kingdom business. So the Lord then said to me again, he said, get excited. It's coming forth. Um, and I understood that creation is yearning and groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I saw that through which that will be birthed, restoration and healing was brought to what was broken and destroyed. Um, I think, I mean, I had a chat with, um, with Emma, I believe she was watching the other day, and we were talking about, she had a dream, and it was about restoration of ruins, and I think this is something that is stirring in a lot of people now, it's, it's the rebuilding, it's the restoration, and um, it is for now, it's for this season. Um, it is restoring creation, yeah. And then I saw what flows out of these businesses, the like what I call life juice, but it's the financials that is flowing forth from them is causing restoration to come. And it's causing healing to come sure. and creation is therefore restored. Sure. And then I saw things blossoming all over, like in springtime, it was because of the life juice flowing that these blossoms were coming alive and coming forth. Now, the, bl the blossoms are talking about flowers, and the flowers always represent visions. So mm. the, the visions were coming to yeah. life. How, how many of you got visions that are sitting with, you're sitting with 5, 10, 15, 20, even 30-year visions, yeah. and yeah. the Lord told us to give the, the, the flowers water yes. to keep them alive. But these flowers, were, these, these plants uh, and trees were blossoming and the flowers were growing yeah. basically means the the manifestation of the visions that God has given you over the last 10 20 15 years mm. 30 years are going to start to manifest when we yeah. start to get into the pattern and the pattern is kingdom 
cooperation, which mm. he, he mm. said, yeah, it's the birthing of a cooperation. So the word cooperation means that we need to cooperate, harmonize with one another. Mm. And there were little cooperations forming. That's all what over. you saw, these little, the, the wombs were That's, birthing all over. Those are the, the honeycombs. Little, little honeycombs. Those so are little I'm, honeycombs. What yeah. I see now is those little cells coming yes. together. Yeah. And making a structure that the Lord yeah. will put the honey in. So just start, I really like what Warren said. The Lord will put the honey in it. The Lord's going to put the honey <laughs> like, in. I really like that. Uh, you know, he calls us, uh, I call him tomorrow, honey. I wear my honey. t-shirt that says honey. <laughs> honey. So it's like, uh, we yeah. are his honey. Okay, yeah. so we, he loves us dearly. And he's going to pour all the resources in. He will. You know when he, he's going to do that? Like but I that's said, that's a picture of Jehovah Jireh. It's like, here comes the honey. He's yeah, pouring it, it in. Why will he pour <laughs> it in and won't, he won't pour it before that? He's waiting for the structure. structure. Because without the structure, it's going to go to waste. Well, that's the safety of a structure. Yeah, I mean, it. otherwise it would spill out everywhere yeah. and then it would go But to he's waste. not going to give it to one ministry. It's yeah. all these ministries it's that corporate. are working together. God's going to pour out abundant resources. And that's the key here. It's kingdom cooperation. So he says, yeah, like yeah. on the day of Pentecost, this is mm -hmm. the Pentecost pattern. On the day of Pentecost, when they were to mm -hmm. all together in one place yeah. and in one accord, that word accord means symphony and harmony. So they were in a pattern there. They were in a holding pattern and the glory of God came down. The glory of God came down mm. over this entire meeting because they were together in one place, yeah. in one accord. So when we work together in one accord, the Bible says in Psalm 133, Behold how good yeah. go there, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And he talks about the oil. Now remember the oil. Why did, wh wh what's the oil got to do with it? The oil comes... The anointing comes, the Pentecost comes, the finances come, the resources come when we're in unity. So what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to get mm -hmm. in unity. Yeah, our yeah, responsibility yeah, yeah. is not the resources. Our responsibility is not the honey. Our responsibility is primarily getting together in a structure in unity. So let's go there. I was so, looking for something else. but So I wonder that he says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. That dwelling together is the coming together in the kingdom cooperation. Hallelujah. Saudi's in the house. Bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head. So when we're in unity, the, the oil is coming down and, and the, the unity releases the oil. Running down on the beard. Okay, the beard of Aaron. The that's Aaron. called, the, he's anointing us as priests. The high priest. Yeah. The high priest yeah. Running yeah. down on the edge. So I have spoken about the high priest today. Aaron, okay. <laughs> that was actually the topic. Again, I'm trying so to you get did mention, there. There we go. You, <laughs> you got it in there. There we go. <laughs> Running. So it's like God is anointing as a priesthood, yeah. but He's anointing us because we're in unity. So this is going to happen with kingdom business people who are, are the primary people called to help the poor. Yeah. Not just the the people that are actually doing the ministry, mm. but actually the people that are there to be the Josephs are the kingdom business yeah. people because they are called to assist when it comes to organization, premises, transport, buckies, not just money. And also their, 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 their skill sets and, and they got staff. And so if you've got a person with 100 staff, some of those staff can do work to actually assist, whether it's on spreadsheets, coordinate, yeah. emails. There's a lot of um, administration that needs to go on yeah. behind the scenes. And so not everyone has to be the one going physically and handing out the food. That's only a part of, the, of what I call the supply chain. All right, so what I wanted to try, touch, touch on now before I forget is that, and I'm going to go back here, is that it, you've, you, we are called to share the bread with the broken, right? Yeah. Okay, so watch this. So we're out there sharing, but when it comes to sharing, yeah, we're not, we haven't got this sharing. So God wants to break that stronghold between ministries and say, why don't the ministries start to share yeah. their resources as opposed to hoarding it? Because that's what's that's blocking right, yeah. that's what's blocking the container. And the only way to share is to sit together, like today on a Zoom meeting, and coordinate together and yeah. say, yeah. How can we work together? And this guy says, I've got unlimited I've got unlimited amounts of potatoes. And the guy says, I've got no potatoes. Yeah. But I've got a lot of uh, maize, me maize meal. You got maize meal? I haven't got any maize meal. And it's like just in one meeting. There can be an agreement and saying, okay, well, I'll give you one bag for one bag, or we'll, we'll just start opening up the silos. And they're basically, we need a way to work. We need basically a, a, a basic set of guidelines. How are we going to work together? What's the protocol? And so that the, 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 the honey can flow. But do you need the structure? So God's bringing the structure. Then he says here, 
it will it'll run down the edge of his garment, so there's going to be overflow. Mm. But here's the key. It is like the dew of Hermon. Now, the dew of Hermon is going on the mountain, and it's running down, and it's making water, right? It's water. It's descending upon the Mount of Zion. For there, listen to this, the Lord commanded the blessing and life forevermore. So we are the final day today, the 21st day of abundant life. Mm. And God is commanding abundant life where there is unity. So you don't have to pray. A lot of people are praying for blessings and God says, no, get in unity and I will command a blessing. You don't pray for a blessing anymore. He's commanding a blessing because he's saying, aha, finally. Do you know, this is the answer to the prayer of John 17. Jesus prayed for unity in the church. And when he sees us, co, this is kingdom, cooperation. You know what I see? It's not just cooperating with each other. It's cooperating with the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So when we Mm -hmm. cooperate with the king of the kingdom and he's saying... In my kingdom, we work with a structure in heaven called unity. So can you get with the program? (laughs) Can you get with the program? It's called unity. And when you guys come into unity, I will pour out a blessing you cannot contain upon the storehouse. What's the storehouse? The storehouse is the church. Not the local church building and and, and their funds. No, the church is you. The church is the storehouse. Yeah. The church. We are talking about house churches. So this little house church yeah. has got, is, it can be like a little cell. Another one can be a cell, a little cell over there. But it's actually to be a storehouse. And the storehouse gets overflowed. And that honey is, remember, bees store honey for, 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 for winter. And so it's a storehouse. So you don't just eat all the honey. So there's a matter of storing and there's a matter of releasing. And remember, Joseph did is he took 20% basically of every year for seven years and stored up for seven years. Yeah. All the supplies so that it can go through the seven lean years. Mm. We are supposed to do that now because the seven lean years are coming. Yeah. This is still the years of abundance. Believe I can tell you now the abundance is coming. And so we're going to go into abundance, but we can't just use everything. We need to store it up. We need to store it up because God's calling us to feed nations. So so the, Joseph was called to feed the world. Okay, at that time the known world. He fed the world. All right, because God gave him a plan. Okay, now God's raising up the Joseph company, who are people that are called in kingdom business, who have given away their shares, they've given everything to the Lord, and they prepared to be a steward. Joseph never owned Egypt. He never had shares in Egypt. He didn't own anything Mm -hmm. at all. All right? So what happens is the only thing eventually they got is they got land, they owned their houses, but they never, he never owned the company. He didn't own like, Mm -hmm. and the the Pharaoh said, you're going to get shares now in Egypt, and you're going to own a piece of the pie. He was a steward. When he died, that, that stewardship went to someone else. He, it wasn't some shares that he had. And so this is why the Lord said kingdom business is when he, and the blood dimension is when he owns every share in every way. way. Yeah, so that right. is why you guys need to look at that. You need to pray about it, giving up your shares. Okay, because God is looking for real kingdom business, not the pretenders, not the people that are Christians owning the shares, but God saying, I want the shares. Are you prepared to release your shares? Or are you going to hold on to them? So, Father, that is something we need to deal with, okay? And I'm not just talking about, uh, okay, he doesn't own the ministry, but you own the company. I'm talking about everything mm-hmm. owned by God, and there's no problem owning a house. That's not, that's not what he's talking about. But what they were doing is if they, if they had extra houses and extra lands, they were selling them and giving that extra money to the apostles. Yeah. So that is what God wants to do. Okay, you want to share? Mm-mm. You'd just never know. Okay, so when you go, <laughs> just let me know. So, so look, she... Um, did you finish with us? Mm. I think there's still more. The blossoming the and the wealth. Of okay, yeah. So things were blossoming and the blossoms were coming forth. And then, oh, that I, just, I did so see the wealth transfer. So this was over the time that I'd been receiving um, revelation on the, on the wealth transfer. Yeah. But this was like another part to it. So that's when the Lord reminded me of that. Um, and, and what was feeding these huge, remember I described it before, these buildings with their spines and the financial structure that was... That is like the spine. The whole of world buildings. economy she saw. And and, and, and she so saw the cash where, flow. Um, yeah, that's what that life juice that I talk about, that's what I'm talking about. It's the, the financial um, system. And that's what the Lord re- reminded me of in this vision is um, it transferring from those buildings to the trees that are dry. And then, you know, with the blossoms and the leaves and the, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. Yeah. Um, 
So that's why it's important to yeah. understand those visions that the Lord gave to Miriam, yeah. specifically about the wealth transfer, because that Babylonic structure is going to come down. And when it comes down, that wealth is going to be transferred yeah. into the new structure. And the new structure in that situation was a whole lot of trees. Now, the trees are talking about ministries. Yeah. All right. And remember the story about um, the, the, the mustard seed? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And the mustard seed goes... It's not about staying as a seed. People think, oh, you've got to just have a little seed of faith and then you're going to move a mountain. No, 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 no. Your seed has to grow into a, a tree and then you can move a mountain. He says faith is like a mustard seed. He said he didn't say faith the size of the mustard seed. Mm -hmm. He says mustard seed is very small and grows into a tree. So we missed the boat on that one because we actually think, no, it's fine. You can move a mountain. Why did the Lord say, oh, you have little faith if little faith was enough to move a mountain? Why did he rebuke the disciples for little faith? Why did he say to the centurion, oh, yeah. I've never seen such great faith. Yeah. So because one day I was actually, I was, I was a bit deceived. I was deceived on this area because I also thought it was, a, a, you don't need much faith to move a mountain. And God says, check it out. And I studied it out and I found out I was deceived because I would listen to lots of people's teaching, talking about just a little bit of faith can move a mountain. And he said, I never said that. Go and read it again. He said he was comparing that faith starts like a mustard seed and it grows into a tree yeah. and then the birds come and go into the yeah. tree. So what I call, I talk about mustard tree faith because mm -hmm. it all, a, a tree starts with a seed. But if you sit with a seed after 10 years, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. You understand? If your faith is the size of a seed yeah, after yeah. 10 years and it's not a tree, you're in trouble because you're a bad steward and you haven't grown your faith. So basically, God wants your faith to go Keep from growing. a seed yeah. to a tree. And when it's a tree, you're going to be starting to move mountains. Mm. You've got to understand. Otherwise, we, we, you know, we're talking about, oh, you just need a mustard seed, uh, just a tiny little faith to move a mountain. And Jesus goes and rebukes us for a little bit of faith. The disciples could have said, but Jesus, the other day you said we only need a little faith. So what are you complaining about? Yeah. Okay, do you understand? When you, we don't read the, the scripture and, and, and test it against other scriptures, we get, we, we get our own little doctrines and we build this whole doctrine of that's all the little faith. You, and I've got lots of preachers preach on the small little faith. And God showed me that no, that's not correct. That's not the truth. The truth is that faith is like a mustard seed, which is very small when it yeah. starts. But it will, when you plant and it grows, then he talks about the, the seeds in, 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 in the word of God is like a seed. In, in Mark 4, and he says that the, the, the sower sows the word. And mm. then the, everything comes to, to, to come against the word. But the, the whole object of that uh, parable is that the seed is supposed to grow and bear fruit. Mm. So how does a mustard seed bear fruit? Unless it becomes a tree. Mm. And if it stays a, a mustard seed, the Lord is not happy with us. So God wants your faith, which is the word that's planted in your heart today, yeah, yeah. to be nurtured, watered, and grow into a tree. You've got to keep the weeds away. And so that when your ministry, because we all call to have ministries, yeah. you don't have to have it. And don't worry, you register, your, your ministry is registered in heaven. So it doesn't have to be registered with the South African government. Your ministry is registered in heaven. God recognizes it because you all have, we all have a ministry. Hallelujah. And some will actually have it physically registered. I'm not saying there's something wrong with that. I'm just saying that your ministry is already registered in heaven. And that ministry mm. is going to be part of the branch. Yeah. On that ministry is going to be feeding the poor, helping mm. the poor. Other one yeah. will be intercession. Other one, you know, you'll have your primary ministry, but we all need to be looking after the poor. It's not, uh, I'm not part of that part. You know, I don't, we don't do the looking after the poor, but yeah. It's like, excuse me, Isaiah 58 mm. applies to every believer. Mm. You got it? Hallelujah. All right, so there we go. Um, and I'm, I'm constantly reminded when I read these through this wealth transfer vision I again, the Lord's constantly reminding me of something must collapse in order for something yes. to be rebuilt. So again, I just want to go back there and say, be encouraged when things are shaking and yeah. when things are collapsing. Um, the Lord told us even to rejoice when that's happening, even though it feels uncomfortable. Um, because if we are called to be rebuilders of things, that means something needs to needs to collapse and needs to come down. And it's like the, the collapse of the old structure so that the new structure can be um, built. So while we're on the topic, I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna address the kingdom economy. And we are addressing the kingdom economy. This is the mm -hmm. kingdom economy. The Lord then spoke to us about Finances for Africa and Kingdom Business Councils. Mm, mm, All right. Yeah. So, so this is going back to <laughs> even before that. This, well, this goes back. This goes back yeah. to 2008. Okay. So yeah. the Lord is building this whole, 
and he's, he's building this invisible structure. And so we're sharing this with you because we believe this, many yeah. of you yeah. are part of the structure. And we're releasing yeah. it now. So this is 12 years old, this vision. And so it's now coming to a pass. And I see that. And, and, and so mm -hmm. from, um, so we would just, we just want to share this with you. And then because in the next couple of days, because remember from the 21st, so we're going to gear up tomorrow. Oh yeah, tomorrow. We're not gathering at uh, 10 past 10. We're going at half past two. So half, past two. half past two tomorrow. Right. We, we, we're going to start tomorrow at half past two. Okay. So, uh, and then we will adjust from there. But half past two is gonna, just going to help him, help us a lot more on the home base here yeah, and the business and everything else. So maybe half past two. Maybe yeah. we could shift it to three. I'm not sure about half past two for now. So, so ultimately, God is actually setting up round tables. Now, you know, when I look... At, the, at, at, at this, I mean, it's amazing. You actually get tables um, that that are actually looking yeah. like this. That what I was just Especially showing you. Now, so, so the the picture that I just showed you now um, of the. I'm just trying to find the picture here. I had it here now. Um, you know, so so this picture here. All right. If you look at this picture here, have you not seen tables that look like that? Have you seen that? Yeah. All right. So what? Uh, why I'm sharing that is because Miriam. Four years before she got the pattern of the kingdom business with the with the honeycomb, she got two thousand. Because you see, my job is kind of to, to bring under. I get understanding. A lot of times, Maroon gets visions. I, don't, I won't she understand. She doesn't understand. It. I say, phenomenal. Give it to me. <laughs> I get interpretation. She gets the visions. We are we are work, we are a team. I That's, mean, we are locked we've in. We've always worked this way. It's <laughs> just, I I I'll get something. I won't always understand it. Some things I do understand, but especially business stuff. <laughs> I have no idea, but then so I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's I'm, a tool for water. I'm, so. a, I'm, I'm Maroon's biggest fan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there we go. There we go. The schooling will be done. Yeah, That's same, right. Same okay, there we go. Schooling will be yeah, done and everything yeah. like that. So I think it's going to help a lot of people. That's gonna, yeah. All also right. So you. awesome. Yeah. Hallelujah. So now, so what happens is she saw these these round tables. Okay. And, yeah. and so I just wanted to, to, it's better if she reads the vision. And then I'll, I'll just share from there because God is busy setting up the kingdom economy yeah. so that when the mark of the beast comes in, we are not going to be stumbling. We're not going to wonder what currency we're going to. God is going to mm. set up a whole okay. economy, whether it's a currency, whether we're going to be trading with our own currency, whether it's going to be uh, whether it's going to be digital currency or physical one like gold, actually coins, whatever, uh, you know, whatever's going to be, God will show us. Yeah. But you don't have an economy unless you've got goods. So there needs to be goods and services. And then, so a lot of people are worrying about currency and say, you know what? The Christians don't even have any goods. So what, what use is currency? Where are you going to? Yeah. People say, you've got to get invest in gold. You've got to put some money in gold. All right? so like, and then most Christians are like, what money? <laughs> it's like, you know, if I put my money in gold, it's like, I can't pay the rent. It's like, hey, where, where are you getting this extra money? So some Christians, yes, they've got money to invest and they can invest in gold and, and good for, for them. But I'm saying most Christians don't have this extra money, money month to month, month, to month yeah. and now it's like you're going to invest in gold. What are the poor people going to do? No, it's like, no. Uh -uh. All right. So what happens is what's been missing is actually the wealth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so before you worry yeah. about currency, you yeah. have to have wealth. Something Real wealth is currency. something substantive <laughs> like yeah. like land is wealth. Yeah. Uh, property is wealth. I mean, uh, I mean, gold is wealth. I mean, yeah. physical, tangible things. And, and if you've got a farm, you're producing things, you're producing washing powder, that is yeah. real wealth, okay? I'm not talking stock market. The stock market can go up and mm. down and it's just digits on a computer and that thing's going to collapse. So we're talking about real wealth, okay? So God wants to mm. transfer the wealth. When the wealth comes now, it's going to come right now. It's going to come right now. The wealth is going to come. Then He will give us... Uh, the concept of what currency and how we're going to actually value things, whether it's going to be on gold, what standard it is, and some countries are going to revert back to the gold standard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ultimately, let's not worry about currency, okay? The money, well, the like buying and said, selling. It's first you make that honeycomb, first you build the structure. And build the, the structure, the honey and the it. Lord will put the wealth in it, yeah. and when the wealth's there, the system of, of currency is, 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 a, is easy me. because now you've got wealth. Yeah. You've actually got wealth. I mean, if you've got warehouses full of grain, you got wealth, mm. but you can have stocks today and tomorrow you lose 30% in yeah. a day on the stock market. Yeah. And you've just, and so that's not real wealth. And you won't even be able to sell it because there won't be any buyers. And that's what happened in the Great Depression. It just collapsed and there was no one. So you could be worth $10 million today and tomorrow you can be worth nothing if the stock market collapses. Yeah. You understand? Because you've just got yeah. share certificates. 
you don't actually own those companies. Mm. You can't say, okay, I'm walking into uh, Tiger Brands, a public company. I want that machine and everything because I've got shares here. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some of the washing powder you got. <laughs> you can't do that. You're going to get arrested. You understand? You can't just start taking their chairs and selling them yeah. because you're a shareholder in a public company. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you, so I w I'm suggesting people, look, get out of the stock market. Unless, I mean, Jesus himself yeah. tells you to yeah. go there, then, 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 uh, then, he, then go for it. you go for it. Okay. But I'm saying, do not put your money in the stock market and all those bonds and everything like that. You've got to get your money into real assets. And we're going to discuss that in the Kingdom Business School. Where to put your money, where to invest your time. And God's already shown us where to put it. Okay. And, mm. and, 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 and he's showing us the strategy behind it. That's what we were getting excited about two days ago. He was saying, he was telling Miriam where to put the money. If God says to Miriam where to put the money, it means he's going to give us something. Yeah. He's going to give us some wealth. He's going to, you know, I'm not saying he has to give you, but you can take, let's say God gives you 5,000 Rand or $5,000. He can take that $5,000. You put it in the right place. You invest it in the right area yeah. and he can make the 5,000, 5 million yeah. In, yeah. in six months. Yeah. Do you understand that? So what happens, and that comes through trading, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. You invest in this, you buy and sell it, and suddenly your 5,000 Rand is a million, 5 million. Yeah, yeah. You understand? And that can happen very quickly. So yeah. all you got to do is you take the little you have and you give it to Jesus and put it in his hands. Remember the one with the loaves and the fishes? He says, what do you have? And he says, give me the little that you have yes. and then I will multiply it. Yeah, and yeah. I believe that's what he's saying to you. Some of you don't have any money. You've just got time. But time is valuable. Mm -hmm. So you've got time and skills. So we need to now give our time, our Amen. skills. And we say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Here I am. And the little boy said, here I have two, two loaves, mm. two loaves and five fish. Yeah. And Jesus then fee fed like about 20,000 people. Now, if you try and organize lunch for 20,000 people with, a, a w with, a, with an hour's notice, let's say, how, where are you going to get all that bread? I mean, even if you go to all the spas. Even if you, you go, had yeah, all the where, No, where would, you get, where would you go and get it? You know how many, you, you imagine it's 20,000 loaves. Where are you going to get 20,000 loaves? How many pick and pays would you, have? let's say not under lockdown, not under lockdown. <laughs> That's a complete, in fact, that was the best way to do it because yeah. when, even if they had the money, yeah. it would take them like, they, they would actually, they, they, there's no shop that's got 20,000 loaves of bread. And, and you take all the shops in your neighborhood, they haven't got 20,000 loaves. No. So what happens, I've done the logistics with that number. That's why I've done it with, the, I'm just thinking trillions of birds, God's yeah. feeding every day. Yeah. I think in terms of logistics, mm -hmm. trucks, tons, containers, how on earth would you get all the food to the birds? How on earth are you going to feed 20,000 people in an hour? God did it because it was the best. That's why there was no money. Money didn't come into it because they said, oh, we don't have the money. Even if you had the money, you go to the shop and they say, well, we have to bake it. Maybe it'll be ready tonight. You can have supper maybe. <laughs> Ultimately, God did it the best way. It was multiplication. Yeah. And you know what? God still hasn't stopped multiplying things. Mm -mm. And you know what? You could actually go and buy some wheat and store it or flour or something. And you pray over it, and tomorrow morning, uh, you've got one ton, it becomes 20 tons. I'm fully into that. You understand? You, you got it? If, I like if, that. You understand? <laughs> Literally, you go there the I'm next day. Pray and over like, my little bit of rye flour. <laughs> that's it. Pray over the rye flour. God, this is the yeah. kingdom economy. We yeah. need to tap into the supernatural realm. Yeah. But if he doesn't want to do it that way, he says, no, uh, what I want you to do is take that. I want you to you buy a ton, sell it, make money, and buy another ton, and do that, and eventually you've got two tons, three well, tons, five tons, and eventually you've got a warehouse, and yeah. that's what God, God's going to do, and He's busy doing all the vitamin C. I had a little bit of money, and that came through insurance. I invested in the vitamin C. I could have actually got my car fixed, but I didn't get my car fixed. I put it in vitamin C. All right, and, 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 that's okay. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, and, 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 and so, so basically, that's how I bought the first vitamin C. All right. So, but what happens is God can take the little you have and multiply to feed nations. Mm -hmm. You got it. So don't limit God. And, say, and a lot of people say, I don't have any money. Say, you don't need money. Mm. You don't need money. Mm. You need faith. Yeah. I'm telling you now, if you have faith, the finance will get to you. Yeah. If you have faith yeah. and obedience, yeah. money will get to you. Okay. Because God can multiply whatever yeah. you have today. Remember the widow? Mm -hmm. The widow? Mm. Remember yeah. the widow? What did Elijah say? He said, no, you must give me, you must give me, you got the last bread. Give it to me. <laughs> Bake me a bread. Like and she was going to die. Yeah. And, and, and because she did that, obedience, obedience. Obedience. 
So instead from, of having a last Lord snack, saying that to us for so long, it's his provision comes through through obedience. Us being obedient. So that is, yeah. the, I mean, I, I've studied this for a long time, and I've actually suffered a long time. So this is not about oh, I've got some theory because I studied the Bible no, so much. No, we've no it. this is something I was searching for and searching for, and because I was yeah. suffering, I we, I we Miriam and I've gone through tremendous suffering when it comes to finances. But finally, he gave it to me very simply. <laughs> And it's really about obedience and faith, not yeah, just yeah, obedience. Yeah. Because if you obey him and you're in unbelief, you still don't get any, you, you, yeah. your finances blocked. Mm -hmm. And the problem is most people don't understand faith. Mm -hmm. They don't know what faith is, really. People that think, you know, faith, they're not in faith, they're in hope. And hope ain't going to bring the steak on the plate, I can tell you that. You need mm -hmm. to have faith and yeah. obedience mm -hmm. to actually receive the finances. And if you want, if you want healing, it's the same thing, faith and obedience. Yeah. So God is providing a kingdom economy, and this kingdom economy is impervious to the world economy. In other words, it is not going to go up and down based on the world economy because there are basic needs on this earth and God wants us to fill them. And so what we need to do is actually come into position. We need to divest yeah. from the world. We need to come out of Babylon. We need to surrender our shares and say, okay, I give it over to you. I'm giving, I'm making this company mm -hmm. a kingdom business. Okay, that's, those are the first steps. But now what's going to happen is when God has set, set up the kingdom corporations, God is going to set up... Uh, this this the structure that he's going to set up uh, over Africa, which is the Kingdom Business Councils. Okay, so watch this. Must I read from there? Okay, so this is the twenty fourth of October two thousand eight. It's it's a little while ago. Warren and I were actually in the in the car when I had this vision. We were on our way to our weekly what we would then have uh, on Mondays. We had business meetings in Pretoria, so we were on the highway going there, and I. We were just praying and I began to see a business uh, round table, um, like a whole bunch of desks that were joined together in a circle. And behind each desk, I saw a business person. And yeah, next to each of the business people was somebody kind of like standing kind of slightly behind, um, was standing another person, which was not a business person, but somebody with eyes to see. And I, I specifically remember seeing their eyes were very, very bright, um, like lights. And in the middle of those desks, so the desks were in a circle together. And then in the middle of those desks, I saw this massive star, like the, the rod of the Lord. Um, it's interesting. I, I listened to something the other day. I can't remember where, but they were talking about the star and how they, back in the day, used to carve their stories into the star. Now, we've been talking about staffs or matas for a very long time, but I found that interesting. Um, so I saw that in the middle of those tables, this staff, and on the staff it said, Finances for Africa. <laughs> okay, hold on there. Okay. Must I stop there? Yeah, okay. No, no, we're going to carry on. But I just want to explain. So basically the desks were joined together in a circle. So basically, if you can imagine those desks you get at a conference center some of them they've actually mm. even cut like that so they can go in in a hexagram yeah, okay yeah. You, you get decks exactly yeah. they will fit and then you can get mm. desks to fit like that and you can create a honeycomb structure mm. if you've yeah. got enough desk so what is amazing is god is putting people like us but behind the person that's in business he puts a seer, a seer yeah. all right so that's basically what god god has called me in business all right and but miriam is not an operating business the way i do but she's a seer and she's mm. se she's a seer prophet and she sees into the business dimension and into the business realm. And when she gives me those visions, I take them as weapons and I, you see them. I use those things. I operate with them. I obey what the Lord has told her to tell me. And so God is giving her vision. So God is going to put the structure and he's going to set up these little kingdom corporations like these desks. And God's calling them kingdom business councils. Okay. Yeah. All right, so in the middle of the desk, so can you imagine there's like a hole in the desk where the honey would be, okay, mm -hmm. is yeah. the staff, and that's also most that's, probably that's an hexagram. The honey. That's the finances for it's, Africa. It's the finances yeah. for Africa. But what yeah. is that? The, you know what the staff is? It's the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord, yeah. That is the honey. That is. You know, honey stands for revelation in the Bible. It's talking about revelation. On, where do you get revelation? What is the revelation? What is yeah. the honey? The honey is the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our provision is massive amounts of the word of God and that word will create, create yeah. and open the gates yeah. for whatever you need in your business. That's right. It will create the opportunities, the yeah. sales, everything I get is in the word. So that's why Jesus said, he said it's not, that man must not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And remember, that was Old Testament and again New Testament. That's the scripture he quoted Satan when he told him to turn the stones into bread. And he could have done it, but he said, man shall not live by bread alone. So the temptation for us is to focus on the bread, the money. He says, man shall not live by money alone, but by every word. So God is saying that the word will create the wealth. The word of the Lord over you will create the wealth. That's why it's the faith and obedience that will create the finances. All right. Yeah. And so God, the Lord was demonstrating on earth when he was here how to take nothing, something that two loaves and five fish and feed 20,000 people, how to walk on water, how to make water into wine. Those are all supernatural things. God is the God of miracles. He's the God of miracles today, yesterday and today and forever. He's never changed. So we've got to understand that that's the that's the honey. Now, the honey is the word without the word of the Lord for those people working together. They've got nothing because the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. He's the living bread, and, he, and if we believe in Him, those words will actually manifest into, into yeah. resources. Amen. So we can get things out of nothing, but we need to know how to operate in the supernatural realm. Yeah. So don't think that you've got nothing today. That's if you've got the Word of yeah. God, you've got everything you need to get yeah. resources. Yeah. Is the Word of God. The, the problem is you don't believe it. Mm. So you've got to repent for unbelief. And yeah. then you've got to actually obey what He says to you. And then He says to you, give your last loaf away, sucker. Huh? Hmm. Get behind me, devil. And seriously, he told that. I'm not saying you have to do it. Obey the Lord. If the yeah. Lord says, give your last love, give it away. He'll multiply it. You will never run out of bread. Yeah. But make sure you're in obedience and not foolishness. Okay? Hear the word of the Lord. Sure. Then you carry on. Okay, so then, 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 then carry on. Yeah, so this table that I was seeing, sorry, I was thinking of something else now. <laughs> this table that I was seeing in this vision was underground. And a lot of the Under, yeah, a lot of the the blueprint when I saw it, and this was in the same year, uh, it was all underground. Um, so I wrote down here the surroundings were quite dark, and the only light that was there came from a, about two or three torches in the tunnel. And that torches, you're talking about torch bearers? Show them the picture. Yeah, <laughs> this is the uh, the background for I don't know. There it is. They can see it. They hold it. Yeah. You see that torch bearer? Yeah. That torch bearer is in a cave here, in a, in a, in, a, in a tunnel. That's, uh, that's her. That's her. That's her desktop. I found so the she, picture the other day. I thought that I know that picture because I've seen it. <laughs> um, that this is where we found ourselves for a very long time. <laughs> underground. We're the church of the underground. Yeah. That's why you've never heard of us. <laughs> but there are many underground, and we are yeah. starting to connect with them. No, we're going to start making a noise. We're going to start not, and, <laughs> and we're going to go above the ground. So God's going to yeah. raise us above the ground, and suddenly the structure that has been coming from underground is going to manifest above the ground, and everyone say. Where did this come from? Yeah. Because it's an invisible pattern yeah. right now, but it's suddenly becoming visible, and that's now. Yeah. Now it's going to become visible. Yeah. Okay, so there was about two or three torches in the tunnel. Then it came to me how the torch bearers from the blueprint of revival might also be business people that carry a torch. Um, let's see, where must I carry on? The people around the table were together holding the staff. So they all had their hands on the staff in the middle of the tables. And uh, as they were holding it, <laughs> I heard the word um, table of agreement. And I saw the people around the table have been trying to create a map. And I saw one of them close to a, a torch with a pen drawing very precisely and with a lot of key lines on the map. And then I saw underground. Sorry, the map. What map is this? Map of Africa. I can't remember. It must have been either Africa or South Africa, but I, I can't remember okay. um, because I've seen maps so often. Um, yeah, so this person was, was drawing on the map. Then I saw underground wells looking much like an underground network of pipes, and I heard um, the gates are underground. And I s the gates are underground. It's all under. It's a now whole, we're talking it's gates. A whole network invisible the Completely gates are invisible. underground now this is the gates the, the gates this is important the the, the word gates okay uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> you get the true gates and then the the bolt i mean the, the false gates <laughs> the gates will not prevail <laughs> so, <laughs> i saw the business people all holding the staff together and pointing at it Oh, and pointing it at the gates that are underground i remember this yeah where these gates looked like water that builds up like with a dam 
I, my English is here from 2008, so it's not that great. <laughs> That's not <laughs> a it's 13 good. years. It's nice. That's nice. So as they, <laughs> as they were pointing the staff at the gates corporately, so they were doing this together, um, the gate would open, and I saw a lot of what had been built up behind it was now released. So there was a lot of water. There was a lot of okay. provision there, but it okay. would not be released until there was a corporate... The enemy, the gates of hell are holding the finances away from us. And the only way yeah. to get the gates open is in unity. So you are struggling in your business because, yeah. and I'm struggling in my business because we're not working together. Mm. You got it? You get it? The, the, yeah. When they came together in these councils, they yeah. had the authority to open business gates. That's, I'm talking about finances. And the water with the finances was stored behind it. So you operating by your business, praying and fasting ain't good enough. Mm. It will not work. It is the corporate coming together where we have the spiritual authority to open gates mm -hmm. in markets, whether it's the farming market, whether it's the property market, whether ever, ever, the market, whether it's the washing powder market, the health market, whatever market you're in, the yeah. tourism market, when God says you can open the gates, you open the gates, mm -hmm. but you can't open it by yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to do everything by themselves and they're fooling themselves because they keep doing things and nothing's happening. Yeah. Yeah. You, when they something, don't. you know it's working when you see it's working. When you open yeah. gates, water comes out. You can't just say, oh, we opened the gates. I say, uh, did anything happen after that? No, no, we just like to do these prophetic actions and nothing happening. You know, yeah. you know I'm, I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm all into prophetic actions. But you know what? When we do a, a real prophetic action, there will be results. Mm. And we are looking for results. And so what God wants us to do is to come together. So this afternoon when we have the Zoom meeting, this is that. Yeah. We are busy with the kingdom work and we are now busy. And some when there's a, a corporate agreement, when all the hands are on that yeah, stuff and there's it. a corporate agreement with the word of the Lord, Boom. then the release of yeah. honey will so come we, into we, the structure. So we're going to be praying and everything this afternoon. So yeah. I would appreciate if you could come there for some time. Yeah, we'll be because good. no, you need the seers there. You need the prophets there. Okay, so uh, you know because you know the kingdom I'm, I'm of God. I'm going to try my best to be there. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So the atheism is a non-profit organization. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> we believe in making profits. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you get profits and profits, but ultimately God wants to bless your business and he doesn't want you to always just be surviving. Yeah. And the reason we're not we're not thriving and we're only surviving is because we're not working together. We are working too hard and not praying enough. Mm. We're not coming in unity because we're too busy. And now guess what? You can't even work. So now you, you can be watching this. Mm. Normally you would never watch this. In the middle of your work day, yeah. you've got to be joking. There's work to be done. Yeah. So guess what? Now there's no work to be done. Everything has come to a grinding halt. So God's got our attention. The devil used it, used it against us and God's using it for us. Okay. So this is very important. So she's seeing the gates open and they pointed the staff now the staff is the prophetic word that god gave the, to that table now there are a lot of tables so these people working together could be six business people working together and five and four and coming together in these kingdom corporations yeah. where each person has a business and those businesses are cooperating okay mm -hmm. together and saying let's cooperate together let's pray together let's seek the lord together and god says right now that you're in unity pointed at that gate and you're going to see finances flow and maybe it'll be mm -hmm. finances just yeah. for one of the business then we say oh well we did it for them let's do it for this one yeah, because yeah. you could be in different uh, markets you could be in different industries you understand and there are there are spiritual gates in industry in the industry where the priests of satan guarding those gates they do sacrifices they do blood sacrifices the freemasons are there in the uh, as the gatekeepers they're the ones that decide yeah. who gets what and they're doing it in the spirit but the christians yeah. are so busy working that they don't understand that business is spiritual. You have to break down the strong man. You have to bind the strong man before you can take his goods. Yeah. That's for business. So we need to understand how to do spiritual warfare. And most business people don't understand spiritual. Ah, oh, they do their general little prayers, you know, two-minute noodle prayers in the morning. That's nothing. You're not going to get your breakthrough by the two-minute noodles. Yeah. We've got to do some serious intercession. We've got to see what God says and do that. And suddenly you'll see a flood of business coming in because you opened the gate. And That's the right. gates of hell shall no. not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the gates talk about governments. There's a government on earth of demons with, with people that are stopping the finances flowing into your business. Mm. That's mm. it. That's it. That's the, that's the real problem. Then the devil says to you, you've got to just work harder. 
you got to work hard and you're sweating and you're worrying and you're sinning and you're worrying but sin, you know worrying is sin and you're stressing and you're giving money and you're wondering you know you're giving you want you yeah. want to give more i know that you're sitting here you want to give more but you can't why because the gate is shut yeah, yeah. and you have only got the authority when you're in unity to open that gate sure. not by yourself so the lone ranger ain't gonna make it it's called kingdom cooperation mm. and it's about the table of agreement so where are you where with who are you walking with who are you in council what business people are you walking together yeah. and god is going to establish these councils all over the country and it's not going to be controlled by the central council of churches or something or the government or the pope <laughs> it's a flat structure and jesus is going to control all the councils himself directly hallelujah so this council reports to jesus this one the whole honeycomb reporting in to heaven hallelujah jesus is in control of his church you understand it's not this whole thing is not a ministry it is ministries working together by the power of the holy spirit and then we're going to take nations we're going to see nations get saved this is the combine harvester many like 20 years ago god showed me the combine harvester it is the combined ministries coming together by, by the holy spirit basically lifting up into there and landing on zimbabwe and when it lands on zimbabwe or zambia or, or the congo when it lands on a city it also is a transformation machine the whole city will be transformed because god has put the combine harvest yeah. together and it'll harvest the city there will be architects there will be lawyers there will be engineers there will be doc doctors whatever god will bring it together there will be pastors leaders and they will work together and they will transform an entire city and they, then the lord showed us that these these uh, combine harvesters are going to crisscross africa and they're going to be linked with a bloodline yeah. and god is going to change the continent of africa from a dark continent to a light uh, uh, continent because he's going to thrust the combine harvesters out from south africa to do the job he sent us here 400 years ago to finish that job mm -hmm. which was the disciple of continent so I said that very fast. You'll have to rewind to hear that. But it's like coming at me like a rushing, <laughs> like rushing water because it's so powerful what God, and it's now the time that yeah. God is assembling the combine harvester. So that honeycomb is going to be assembled into a combine harvester or two or three. There's yeah. not just one combine harvester. There are many that are going to come out. And South Africa is a factory where God's going to make combine harvesters, transformation machines, which will land on cities. The Holy okay. Spirit is driving it, not man. And they're going to come together and they're going to work together and say let's get the harvest you do your job you do it and we work together we work together in harmony we love one another we share if i'm blessed i say let's share it. look what i got we got bread let's share it and like neil always says everything tastes better when you share it <laughs> yes you got some and yeah I, I got some understanding on something um this morning I, and one doesn't even know this yet so I, i'm just bear with me <laughs> I was listening to um, um, a teaching from Kenneth Hagen and he's talking about faith and he's sharing this testimony of a woman that got healed in her hearing. She was like very deaf, like couldn't hear a thing, got healed at a meeting uh, with some other preacher, can't rem remember the name now, but then went home and a little while later they had a family celebration for Christmas and long story short the whole family kept telling her you're going to lose your healing hearing you're going to lose your hearing again you're going to lose your healing and they kept saying this over her and what they prophesied happened and he started to explain like Kenneth Aiken started to explain how important it is to hang around those who believe with you yeah and as yeah. you're talking it's like I'm having this picture of um you know this whole thing with the five minute warning and come out of the building and yeah, get says, out of the get structure. out of the structure get out of the it corporate is, structure it is so important to be around those who um agree with the word of the lord over kingdom business at this time this whole thing with all the hands on the staff it is it is in the power of agreement corporately agreeing it's a table of agreement but corporately agreeing it's with the word of, of the lord and 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 then in connection with come out of her my people come out of her my people come out of the structures of the unbelieving and yeah. the doubtful and get into the structure of the believing in the word of the lord over africa at yeah, this time so that we can put all hands on deck so i was just writing that down here that it's important to be around those who believe no longer in the system with those who do not believe or do who believe 
for I mean the evil stuff that yeah. they are in faith for that to happen but we got to be in faith for the word of the Lord to manifest but it's like the Lord is saying come out of those structures of the unbelieving so that you can stand together as one and believe the yeah. word of the Lord over over South Africa and Africa at this time so to come out of her is to come out of the structures of the unbelieving coming out of Babylon is coming out of the structures of the unbelieving and the doubtful and into the structure transferring into the structure of the Lord this honeycomb is saying yes this is what the Lord is saying let's go with it let's put our hands on that stuff and let's go with it let's open those gates but it's all it's a corporate thing yeah. it is important to be around those who believe together they need like-minded people so that you don't get yeah. i mean you have this faith stood in you you go back into this babylonic structure and people are saying no that's never going to happen you're going to lose your healing you're going to lose mm -hmm. this no if we are hanging around those who believe together yeah. with that's, us then faith key. is stood and that is the key that's going to make get you move forward. the word to actually well, manifest the bible says uh, if to agree it shall be done and that's yeah but this, as you're talking i'm just I'm seeing the connection with what I was listening to this morning sure. on something just for healing, but it also works. Her for faith was business. dropped because she agreed with the doubters. She agrees with doubt. the, her own doubt, family. Nobody. I mean, they should have been rejoicing yeah. with her. And he was explaining how these were people that were all yeah. spirit built, born again, prophesied, you know, but they kept telling her. You he weren't really healed. You weren't really healed. You're going to oh, lose your good. healing. Gonna... So it's so important that we are around people that can stand remember the, remember the, the 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 spies yeah all right who's and they, they, they bought whose report then they came back with the evil report yeah, yeah all right yeah so you got to hang around with people that actually are walking in faith and full of the holy spirit otherwise you're getting deceived i want to finish with a vision and, and basically it carried on she said saw these business people and the eyes who apparently seemed to walk with them the eyes so, yeah they were like pain. Are, are, yeah. are the people that are walking with them like mirrors my eyes because she's she's a seer and we're opening these gates. Now these gates was a there's water behind these gates. Remember they had wells. Now there's a difference to have a well. You're digging. That's what you've got now. Your business is yeah. a well, and you're finding. And then there's water. Then there's no water. You're battling with your well, right? Now there's a river right there now, and God's got it, and it's dammed up, and the devil's dammed it up, and God's saying, "Open the gate. You won't worry about your well anymore." <laughs> it's it is well now. It is. It, it, it is fine. You can say it's well with my soul, but you've been struggling at your well because yeah. your cash flow yeah. is never quite enough. All right, and it's not an abundance because you're drinking from a well. Now there's a big difference between watering from a river and a well. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a river is just unending, and so the devil people have got rivers. We have got wells, and they're laughing at us. Yeah, we are digging at our wells, and the, these these business people are drinking from rivers. And we yeah, think, look how yeah, much money yeah, they make. Yeah. They're wicked. How does this work? It's not fair. No. They are operating with yeah. their master, the devil. They're serving him, and he's making sure they get the money, and you don't. Now God says, first to bind the strong man. Yeah. Then you take his goods. Yeah. So th then he says, uh, she said, we're opening these gates, but they were also closing the, the gates. Their function was twofold. It Open, was opening gates, but it was also closing. Shutting them. And, and remember the scripture, Matthew 18, 18. Yeah. And surely I say to you, whatever you bind close on earth yeah. will be bound in heaven so we need to shut some gates in the, in the markets and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven again i say to you that if you do have agree on earth concerning anything they ask it will be done yeah. by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name yeah. i'm there in the midst that's church you want to know where the church is yeah. that's there and so people's eyes are going to be opening because it's like okay what, did you leave church you never went on sunday no i've been saying this for years the church is where two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, where God mm. calls you together. Hallelujah. You want to say something? Mm. Huh? Mm, that's fine. Okay. Saw the gates again and I heard. Gates to the finances for Africa. Yeah. Okay. Did you get that? Like I keep saying, this is not about South Africa. This is about Africa and yeah. we are part of a continent. Mm. Okay. And God is saying, these are the gates to the finances for Africa. We have got authority when we work together in the kingdom cooperation and start to cooperate and to pray together and seek the Lord together and come into agreement together. Yeah. And, and first, you have to convert to a kingdom business. So you don't get to kingdom yeah. cooperation and, and if you're owning all your shares and it's in your name. It's not going to work. It's got to be divested and it's got to be in a proper structure. You've got to now give it away. So this ain't going to work for people that are in Christian business. 
So it's not going to work. Because I've tried to work with people that are still in Christian business. And they say, yeah, they like this idea. Opening gates and finance and everything like that. But they haven't done the conversion yet. Mm -mm. And God says, blood dimension. How do you enter the blood dimension when you haven't, so you haven't given your shares away? Yeah. Sorry, I can't yeah. help you. I didn't set the rules yet. He did. So that's the, that's the prerequisite. Mm. Blood dimension. You've got to step into the blood dimension. means you've got to actually get out of your shares, divest yourself of shares, and so become a steward. Mm. You can be a trustee on the trust. At the end of the day, you can be a beneficiary as well. Your family can be a beneficiary. But at the end of the day, ownership is now over. It is now stewardship. Finish. That's kingdom business. And then it says, yeah, uh, God saw the table was like a circle, a metron, but also it will grow and it looked like a ripple effect of an earthquake. Yeah. So that that go all over continent. Okay. But then he said, he showed us what's going on here. And I, we're going to finish with this now and then we can pray and we're going to be finished. We're going to wrap up right now. Saw the table was like, okay. It was like a ripple effect ac across the continent. So the size of the table yeah. grew and grew and I saw and it expand all over the nation of all over South Africa mm -hmm. and then across yeah. the continent. So it must start in, remember he said um, kingdom yeah. cooperation will start in South Africa. What, what is, will be birthed in South Africa will be embraced by the nations. What is birthed in South Africa will be embraced by the nations. That's what he said to That's her. That's when he said get excited. It's coming forth. It was about that word that what yes. will be birthed here and it was the birthing that I was resisting but yes. what will be birthed in South Africa will be embraced by the nations. So that there's a pattern that must be birthed here and then um, yeah, the Lord said to me, epicenter Johannesburg. Yeah. And then he said, the Metron will grow as the agreement grows. So, and it's got Metron to do with is your authority, your, your, area your, your area of authority. As the agreement, as your area, as the agreement grows, so your area so of area, authority. It will expand. And yeah. your, your mandate grows because you've got agreement. Yeah. And, and that's where we've been battling, is the area of agreement. So this is what the Lord is saying. And so the Lord said, kingdom yeah. cooperation. But I wanted to read it. And this is now releasing the continent. And Miriam's got more on the continental finances are going, yeah. to, going, going to be released. But now is the time we're coming. And that will take the company of Jehu as well. Yeah. The company of Cyrus. We just spoke yeah. about the company of Joshua, um, uh, Joseph. But there's a company of Cyrus. I spoke a bit yesterday about it. But there's a company of Jehu as well. Mm. See, there's four companies that is needed to to take down the stronghold of, 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 of Mammon and Jezebel over the continent to release the continental wealth mm. into the children of God's hands. That's where we are. So this is very important okay. where we are right now. God has now got us underground. We're about to rise and suddenly this thing is going to come. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. All right, you got it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, Father, we just want to say thank you for the revelation. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are taking us into the kingdom economy. Yes. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will give everyone a revelation of kingdom business. Yes. Lord, from those scriptures, let mm. them see what kingdom business is about. Mm -hmm. Father, help them to structure according to what you've said, kingdom business. And then, Lord, I thank you that you give us your wisdom and understanding of how to walk together in kingdom cooperation yeah, all across this nation. I pray for grace upon the meeting this afternoon, yes. the, that meeting, the, the Joseph company coming together to help the poor. Yeah. Lord Jesus, help us to love one another. Help us yeah. uh, bind any fear of that meeting, any selfishness. And I pray, Lord, for your love. I pray for the spirit one. of revelation and that we can operate in one accord. accord. Yes. Amen. Amen. We can operate in one accord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit is poured out. That's it. So, and then also don't forget tonight is the healing rooms. Oh my goodness. So we got, I forgot about that. I must do it. I haven't even done, I haven't even done the announcement. I, yeah, it's the healing out. room at what time? Half past seven. Half past seven. Half past seven. Yeah. So it's 10 o'clock. It's two o'clock and half past seven today. Healing rooms. Yeah. If you know someone that needs healing and there's lots of people sick, it's terrible. Yeah. Okay. So we, 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 God is, God is doing miracles and he yeah. wants to continue to do miracles. And uh, we'll see you at 2 and see you at 7.30. Yeah. And thank you for joining for 21 days. 21 days. Yeah. Awesome. This has been really Praise good. the Lord. So yeah. tomorrow um, we will start. I don't know what we're going to start day one or day 20, 22 or whatever. Um, but we're going into a whole, we're shifting. Yeah. As you can see now, we're shifting and we're going to, we'll, we will see. But tomorrow we will be on it uh, by God's grace at 2.30. Eh? 2.30. 2.30 tomorrow. We'll also send that out in the WhatsApps and the announcements everywhere so that people can get used to the new time. The new time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Shalom, shalom, shalom. shalom.